I'm super glad to see also a lot of familiar faces uh, here here today. So thank you for all those who keep coming back uh, to reshaping work events. Um, and I believe that Judith and Jeroen really got us started uh, on a right foot. Uh, really impressive research that they're doing uh, on a very important topic of data portability. Um, but what's important is how platforms that collect this data and possess power to distribute it see actually data sharing. Why or why not do they think it's important? And what are some of the pioneering initiatives already in place? So I'm really happy to introduce you to three platform representatives uh, that are gonna be uh, talking to us today. Uh, Maria uh, Mingrone, project manager of Globo Pro. Uh, so the Globo uh, uh, food delivery uh, platform, among others, founded in Barcelona in 2015, now one of the leading players in the sector. Uh, Vichert uh, Dehan, co-founder of Romler, uh, and Romler empowers businesses by providing flexible workforce. Um, and Michael Bugai, the CEO and co-founder of Miploy, uh, which is reimagining uh, the way we see staffing industry. So uh, welcome all of you. Um, to, to get the audience to, to get to know you, uh, I have an opening question for each one of you that doesn't have anything to do with data portability, uh, but I'm wondering in 30 second, seconds, what is the business decision that you had to make in the past year and that you are the most proud of? Uh, Wichert, how about you? Um, I think we, we made a lot of decisions, but I think um, one that I'm uh, especially proud of is that we decided to deliver or to share our platform with healthcare organizations so they can make use of the platform there themselves um, and, and empower their business themselves with it. Um, and also uh, use it, they're able to use a hybrid model between flexible workforce and their own stuff. Um, and I think that's a, that's a really nice development. Great, thanks, Richard. Michael, how about you? What's the decision you made in the past, past year that you're really proud of? Um, it would be the fact that we've opened up our platform for other entrepreneurs. So if you wanna start your temp agency or if you have a legacy agency, you don't really have access to the technology. So you can actually build it upon our rails. Uh, so uh, I think the transition from just kind of building our own platform to actually opening up our platform for other entrepreneurs and companies, and that way also giving workers more access to different types of jobs, so not just provided by us, but actually creating an ecosystem uh, of jobs around uh, with different companies. Great. That's something to be proud of, definitely. <laughs> How about you, Maria? What, what uh, makes you proud? Um, I'm really proud uh, that we in Globo created a e-learning platform for queers um, so they can access from all around the world uh, to certain courses uh, of different topics so they can um, reinforce some skills or develop some new ones uh, and this in a way can help them achieve um, at other jobs uh, besides being a queer. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Maria. Um, so to get us started in the discussion, um, something I'm wondering, uh, also, you know, building up of what Judith and Jeroen were talking about, um, is that all your industries are quite specific and there are different things that count and they make a star worker, they make a great performer. And also lots of these tasks are quite new, right? Uh, delivering food, using digital technologies. There are also some new skills that these workers are developing on the job. So I'm wondering for your specific industry, what makes a star worker? What makes someone a, a good performer? So what are the actual metrics that you use? And how do you think these would be useful for other industries uh, as potentially uh, a next, uh, next stepping stone for workers? Uh, if anyone would like to first take a floor, just uh, feel free to unmute yourself, we heard. Yeah, sure. Um, so maybe it's good to know for Romer is a platform for well described tasks. So every task that's in our platform is very well specified. So you know exactly what you need to do as a worker. Um, and therefore we are also able to check if the task has been done correctly. 
Um, can you give an example of uh, some, because you guys have high skilled and low skilled, can you give for, for the audience just an example of typical, most common task on Roma? Yeah, so we were active in multiple industries. Uh, one is retail, collecting data from um, uh, stores and from, from out of home. Um, another is the installation technology uh, branch where we install smart thermostats, for example, at people's houses. And the third one is um, delivering healthcare, um, both in the mental hair, uh, care and in the home care uh, industry, and also um, um, uh, taking uh, corona tests as well. Uh, so, for example, uh, um, installing a smart thermostat is, is a task that is well described in our platform. So, we know exactly what kind of skills someone needs, um, what kind of certifications you would need. Um, and we check based on evidence if, if an installation has uh, completed correctly. And for us and, and to us, a, a what we call roamer is a good roamer if we, if we um, can uh, approve all of those tasks that are sent in. Um, we don't do a lot with um, reviews from our customers. Our customers are not able to, ch uh, to choose uh, the installer that comes by. Uh, because we believe that if you um, uh, if you have the right skills and certifications to do a task, you're able to do them, and you can pick up the task yourself. Wait, so do I understand right that your clients don't rate the work? They don't rate the Romlers? It, it happens sometimes, but it's, it's, um, that's, we don't actively do anything with it. So how do you know if someone um, maybe arrived on time, uh, had an appropriate chit chat conversation during the job or anything that goes with it yeah so that's that's um, um our platform checks and registers all of the steps that are taken so we know if uh, um, if the kpis are correct for a certain task um and if 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 someone is not is not being nice to a customer we'll will not will know because the customer will complain um but it's um it but the customer work. wouldn't really reach out to you call you on the phone and complain so it's not really digital yeah and our, and our customers um so for example a, a large um energy company they might they might have a, a follow-up survey on our services as well um mm -hmm. so um but we don't we don't use this rating uh in order to uh, exclude or include our own Wow, that's super interesting. Uh, Maria, Michael, how about in your respective industries, what makes someone a star worker, a good performer, and what are the metrics you check? Uh, Maria, start you. Okay, thanks. Um, so um, in global, what um, a queer is a star worker in a way, um, I think it's more related to users and ratings partners, um, because as, as mentioned before, in a way, it is what it's more linked to trust. Um, and in a way, um, that is our like North Star um, in, in terms of metrics. Um, and in a way, we think that the certificate um, displays a lot of information relevant for other industries or organizations hiring people um, or professionals, um, not only for our queers, um, because in a way our professionals, our queers are professionals not only in the delivery service, but may also be um, in, in the operational, uh, in operations and in local commerce dynamics. So in a mm -hmm. way, yeah, sorry. No, I'm wondering because you said that ratings for you play a big role, but Globe, especially your food delivery part, is very specific because the product is provided by a third party, so it is provided by restaurants. So how do you separate if rating is actually a rating of a restaurant and cold meal or bad food or actually relates to workers' performance? Well, um, the thing is users, when receiving an order, can rate not only the courier service, but also the partner service. So if food arrives, um, like, I don't know, uh, there's a, a problem with the food itself, they rate the partner and the bad rating in a way goes to the partner, not to the courier. Um, and on the other hand, the, the ratings to courier are more related to if the product has been uh, handled correctly, if the communication with the courier was okay, if he was polite, if he followed the instructions, 
So in a way we track like different things. Okay, I see. And these metrics like ratings, that's obviously something that's very visible. How about non-visible uh, uh, skills if you want? So how fast the worker has gotten to location? So the things that only you see, do you keep track of those? And do you, do you rate yourself workers internally? I mean, we don't rate queers uh, in terms of their speed. Of course, we kind of know that, but that's not something we um, track queers and, and in a way display this information to them um, because we think that's not like super important for queers to know. Um, so, so yeah, basically that's it. Thanks, Maria. And Michael, how about you? What makes the star worker in our industry? What are the metrics you guys are taking? So uh, we, um, so first of all, uh, the type of industries we operate in, so we are basically a digital staffing agency. So what we look, uh, our, most of our clients operate warehouses, distribution centers, manufacturing plants, um, or kind of industrial uh, production. So there is something you can Google, which is called 10 skills that don't re that require zero talent. And that is being on time, work ethic, effort, body language, energy, attitude, passion, uh, how you're coachable, uh, are you doing the extra things and are you prepared when you come to work? And those things, uh, so we don't book people, we don't choose who goes to work. So the key metric for us is rebooking rate. So if a company booked you for a shift, will they book you again? Uh, and that is completely up to the worker. So for us, uh, we can see that companies can post public ratings. They can post ratings for themselves as well, because some companies use maybe 100 different persons in their plant. Um, so they need to know who are the most efficient ones, who are the ones that have learned certain skills or have learned and operate a specific machine. Uh, and that way they can organize their kind of flexible workforce they have through us. Okay, so uh, clients really select their workers based on the metrics you provide, which is different and, than Romler, for instance, which just sends off workers. And we don't provide much metrics, actually. We help the workers create a great profile, create a CV uh, with their experience, uh, choose, write up their skills. And the way the workers apply is that they do an application. <laughs> it takes just a minute to do it. Uh, but it goes so it goes quite fast um, and that way they have to learn to sell themselves to the company so it's just like being on a uh, job interview in that sense but everything is online uh, so from that perspective it's we try to help the workers succeed on our platform mm -hmm. um, and try to give them the right tools to be able to have a long career uh, with us if they, that's what they would like to uh, Twenty percent of the workers that engage with companies through us actually get hired by the companies. So we're actually pretty good to try and hire place uh, in that sense. I see. Great, thanks, Michael. So something that puzzles me um, is all what you just described about these metrics. It's quite specific to 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 your industry, and and some things are really also quite specific your platform. So even if you look at a similar other platforms, you really have a specific way that, that you assign tasks, that, that they meet the clients, uh, so on. Uh, so I'm wondering, even if data sharing was a possibility, and we'll talk also about your initiatives later on, um, how applicable would that be? So for Global, for instance, well, a worker is getting very fast the client or to the restaurant, for Omler retail sector, they're taking great pictures of how Heineken is being stocked in supermarkets. How translatable is that to any other industry? And do you think that as platform leaders, you have responsibility to find out in which industries these skills would be applicable and to help workers transition in the next career step? I think it's, I think it is coming back to the fact that there's, there's, direct skills that you have. And then there is skills that are hard to communicate. That's what reviews are so interesting. Uh, when you read a review about a person online or on any platform, you look for other aspects than are, can they exactly do this type of thing? So for example, is a person coachable is extremely important for everyone. Like how do you take in the task? How do you learn? Uh, how do you take feedback? So I think platforms, 
what would make it interesting is if a platform can figure out how to translate the traditional kind of reviews because it doesn't matter if you get uh, if you get five stars as the research previously shown if you get five stars on uber for me that doesn't count for anything exactly uh, and that's what i mean yeah and you can't use that on neploy but it could for example be that the person uh, has received there's a lot of positive mentions actually or written reviews that uh, same that this person is very nice as a person or very kind of communication skills are very high, for example, and have a nice attitude. I love to ride with this person again. That could be translatable into something that could actually bring a value into uh, any type of work interview uh, or any type of platform in the future. Yeah, and I guess for um, me, Ploy and for Omlor, there is really personal kind of connection. Uh, uh, maybe longer personal connection than in, in the food delivery, communication skills could be just an important aspect that could be very uh, transferable, uh, for instance. Mm, Maria, any thoughts on um, a, a, a Glovo or what Glovers possess, the skills that they learn also on the job? Could it be transferable to another industry? I mean, as, as I mentioned before, um, most of our couriers uh, are delivering right now with our app, but we know that for some of them, and, and some of them are super, um, are, are super in love with what they do. But for some of other, some others, um, this is like a temporary job, um, and this is something they are doing uh, until they find something that suits their needs or their interests in other ways. Um, so, in a way, what we want to do is to, from global, give them. Um, other um, tools for them to, to develop their, their future careers. And this certificate we have in a way um, acts as a facilitator for sharing this um, information with other employers. And in so, your onboarding process, do you ask this question? Do you know if workers are there just for a short while to get extra income or they're actually looking that as a stepping stone to the next career? Well, I mean, that depends on the country we operate. Um, we are in more than 20 countries and profiles, uh, queer profiles are super diverse. Um, in some countries, uh, most of our queers are young people, students. So we know for a fact they are um, using Globo to generate an income until they find uh, a, a job more aligned to, to their studies. Um, in some other countries, the profile is completely different. Our, um, super uh, in love with, with the flexibility Global offers them. Um, some of them even resigned uh, other jobs to, to deliver orders. Um, so they don't want to, to move to other jobs. So that depends a lot on, on the country and, and the culture uh, in yeah. which we operate. Yeah. Vihar, did you want to add something uh, to this? Yeah, I like what, what uh, Maria is saying. It, 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 it... It, it, for us, it depends per sector in, in how long people will stay or use the platform. And um, although, uh, and I think it's also interesting to, to know what kind of skills someone has. And, and um, I think sharing the data could, if, if the sharing the data could help them to take a next step, that's great, of course. And, and, and we're more than happy to, uh, to facilitate it as well. Yeah, great. And indeed, the, the reason why we invited specifically the, the three of you is that your companies are actually pioneering some data sharing practices. And uh, I'd like an audience to, to get a peek into that. And, and for everyone watching this, please uh, pose the questions in the chat or also raise the hand uh, um, so we can make this really interactive. Uh, but um, Maria, would you like to uh, present us very quickly what Globo is doing um, uh, on data sharing and, and uh, pioneering the, the certificate? Uh... Yes, of course. Um, well, so basically what we do at Globo is we have a project that we call Globo Pro, um, which in a way aims to facilitate the, the portability of certain user metrics um, through the inclusion in a, in a certificate. So in this way, um, our queers can count with this information that can support them in, in, in a qualitative and in a quantitative way um, in the search for, for other jobs. So basically what we do um, is we give them access to this kind of uh, CV, which Martin uh, showed previously. Um, they can choose- You wanna between... share your screen and show us? Yes, of course. So basically, um, this is, of course, a, a template. This is um, fake information. 
Um, here's like the long version in which you can see like uh, personal information, contact information. Could here you zoom it can... in, uh, Maria, please? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's um, all fake. <laughs> Um, but they can introduce themselves, um, add their education or previous um, job experience. Also, if they speak, oh, sorry about the typo, um, other languages or like uh, other person for them to contact. And of course, we include like global statistics um, that we think are quite useful for, for other people to, to look out uh, when having like a, a job interview. Um, and we also have the short version, which only includes um, global information. So of course, this information is provided by us as a company um, and the, the personal information uh, has to be um, included by, by the, the courier. Um, and I was wondering, like, is there some comparison? Because, for instance, I read for this uh, uh, fake profile, uh, average delivery time, uh, 10 minutes. Uh, but I don't know what that means. Is that, does that mean he's doing very well or he's doing really poorly? Did you consider putting what the actual platform average is? Well, yeah, I mean, like the information displayed under that metric uh, gives kind of an idea of what the, the metric um, refers to and gives kind of a, an idea on what is the average for, for couriers or, and for uh, somebody reading that um, CV to know if that is something um, accurate or it's kind of in, in average. Yeah, I see. I see what you mean. Um, and uh, did you already, is this in use? Can Glovers already download this certificate? Well, yeah, actually, this is a project that is live in, in some of our countries like Italy, Morocco, Ivory Coast, um, Georgia, and, and some others. Um, we send uh, like this first communication, communicating couriers about this initiative. Um, and more than 35K couriers um, applied to this, uh, were interested. They had to fill a form and then uh, download the actual certificate. And we have um, almost 18% of the initial couriers impacted actually downloaded the certificate and, and used it. That's and great. yeah, it's, it's super, it's super um, interesting to see also that um, after that, we, after the, the certificate is downloaded um, we sent out a survey like two months after that um, asking them about the the certificate if, if they found it useful if they used it already um, and we um, we got that feedback and we already modified certain things in, in like, taking into account that um, suggestions um, so in a way, can you just share a couple of suggestions from workers? What was important well, for them? Yeah, we included, for instance, the photo. At first, the, the old certificate uh, didn't include it. Um, we made it look kind of more professional. The first draft was um, more colorful and not like a CV, like a normal CV uh, we actually use. Uh, so we uh, redesigned it. We added like the personal description for them to include something more um, related to them and not just metrics. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, th those were some of their, their suggestions and we already implemented them. Great, great. How about you, uh, Vihar? So obviously Romler is part of Gig CV. Uh, where the motivation for that? Why do you think it's important? Well, I think it's really important because, uh, and I'm happy we joined the Gig City project. Um, I think it's someone's right to have the data to start with. Um, and although, of course, we don't want to see the roamers go um, forever to another platform, um, I think it's in their best interest and in the best, um, and ultimately in our best interest to facilitate them if they want to leave. Um, I, I'm super interested to see uh, what, what figures Maria has got from, uh, from their uh, um, um, uh, project and, and if they are uh, leaving forever. Um, I think it's in, in the world we live in, it, it, it's, we see roamers as persons who sometimes have the, uh, the need for a temporary uh, uh, place where they can work. A lot of roamers, they like to do it um, uh, on the side for their other work. Um, some, they also use other platforms like the 
the multi-home like Jeroen mentioned. Um, and, um, but, but I think most important is that for, for us, the really good people are hard to find. Um, so for us, it's also a way to, um, how, how strange it might sound, it, it, it's also a way to attract people, to be open and to be fair to them. Um, I think in the end, that's the best way to attract the roamers uh, to our platform. And we have one of the audience members, uh, uh, Valeria Plignano, uh, who is a professor at KU Leuven, is wondering, do you discuss this process of data sharing with Romlers? Uh, are you engaging them in co-designing the models of data sharing and using? Well, I wish, but that's, um, that's something that has taken place through um, the efforts of Martijn. So he had surveys and, and he collected the data on what they expect. Um, and, and I think it's really strong if we all have the same layout and the same model of, of export. So um, as the platforms have joined, that have joined Martijn for the GigCV um, project, we all share the same layout and the same uh, metrics that we share. Um, so um, there's no point in asking our roamers what they like to see because we we comply with what uh, Martin is designing. Okay, I see, I see. Valeria, I hope that answers the questions. Let us know if there's any follow-up. Uh, Michael, how about in your, within your organization? Are you thinking about uh, data sharing? What are some of the thoughts you and your team are having? So we have uh, one thing that is uh, when you sign up, we kind of make it clear for you that your data, you own it. Um, so first of all, the fact that if you want to get deleted, we ensure we delete all your data. Uh, the terms of the portability, what's, what's complicated that we've seen, and we actually don't know exactly how to solve it, is the fact that the companies that use our platform do not leave reviews for the work of the workers. And it's simply because they use the same person uh, for months sometimes. And it's not shift-based in that way that you work one day at that company, they give you a review, and then you do something else. Um, so when they... Uh, when you start working, you check in in order to get, of course, the time is right. You check out and then the company approves you and then can always leave a review. But in 99.99 cases, there's no review left because the shift leader has too much other things at hand that they need to focus on. Uh, so what we've engaged in now is that we created a, a CV creator on the platform. Uh, and we're working now to understand what's the motivation for people to actually fill in their experience. Uh, so if we have uh, on Meeplo, we already share 10% of our profits with our workers through a bonus scheme program. So if you complete a shift and if you complete your CV, you actually get around 12 euros as a bonus with your next paycheck if you actually completed that CV. So do I your experience right that CV Creator is a digital tool you, tool you created and work yeah. themselves fill in information about them, but you do not as, as Glovo um, and Romler add some metrics from the platform. And that's the next step of that. So what we're looking into is the figuring out how does, uh, how do we become a relevant information on your CV and how then you can download that CV and to get, uh, whatever reviews or positive metrics you have from our site uh, onto your CV and you can use okay. that for what job applications. And so you pay people to create their own CV or you reward them for that. So is yeah. this CV also relevant internally for you when clients are picking selecting? Absolutely. Them? Okay. Because many clients like you have, for example, if you need someone that has uh, uh, a welder, for example, then a company, of course, would like to see before they pick someone, do you actually have welding experience? And from where do you have that experience? So what we've done is that we uh, users can, when they apply to job, there's requirements, what information do you need to share? Um, and uh, for example, it could be a CV, it could be criminal record. And then you, um, you give, the, how do you say the shift leader permission to view your CV and that's how it basically works and then you can remove that permission for the user so you can see exactly who has the permissions to see what information on your uh, on Meeploy um, as a company and uh, we just need to figure out a smart way of how to translate the data in a favorable way because there is a challenge in terms of uh, if you go for a shift for one with a company that doesn't have any rebooking opportunities, you shouldn't be penalized on the data on that. 
versus you go with a company that has 20 shifts for you per month. And how do we then interpret the data in the right way? Do we look at reliability metrics, for example, as you showed up 100% of time or you showed up only 70% of the time? So do you check in on time? So there are aspects of that that we are looking into and then figuring out how can we play a role on that CV for the person in their next career step? Because we do not believe we are, I mean, we also think we're more of a transition, like any temp agency, uh, a transition to a full-time job. And people are here for different reasons, but like Globo mentioned, many people come here because they look for flexible income. Uh, some people are here because they can't find anything else. And then, of course, we need to figure out how to create reliable income streams for them uh, while they're with us and then how we can help them finding whatever they would like to do. Great. Thank you, Michael. Um, I would like now to open um, uh, questions for the audience. Uh, so please raise your hand if you would like to ask a question to our panelists. If you go down to the reactions in the bottom right corner, you can raise your hand. Um, um, and then ask a question directly. Uh, there was a very interesting question in the chat by Vili, a professor at uh, Oxford University. Uh, so I'm gonna read it out, but Vili, please jump in uh, if you wanna clarify it. So Vili was wondering um, about the strategic worker behavior with data sharing. So the worker may decide to transfer only the good scores and don't transfer the bad scores. So what would be the implications of that for employers per perception and also the value that those scores then have? I think if I can answer that, I think it's like, I mean, I don't know how many CVs I've read and how many job interviews you had where people are overselling themselves. It's just part of life. You always pick the, you cherry pick what information you want to present. You don't go on Tinder and write, here are my flaws, right? Take, take it or leave it. Uh, you prepare you take, you select what's going to give you the best chances of achieving the next step in your life. And I think people should have the possibility of doing it. But do you feel like, because obviously you guys are providing some of the metrics, do you feel responsible in a way as, as gatekeepers? Because in some industry, if you think of ride hailing, for instance, where safety on the road is very important. So imagine Uber driver deciding uh, to only show a metric how communicative he is and not that he had maybe two road accidents. Yeah, but you can still, there's no way for us to know where that information is going to be presented. So there's another question, for example, uh, in the chats, uh, if we check the vali validity for the CVs. Uh, of course, we don't completely because we, we can't. Uh, there are a couple of hundreds of CVs uploaded each day, so you cannot go through it each manually. We have to build it on trust. Um, and the same in the case with the Uber driver, it's you can always fake information uh, that will paint the brighter picture of the reality. And I think I think in terms of Gixi feed, it's a little bit different because you import all, um, we export all, and you see the the average scores and and and, and the number of tasks you've completed. Um, so I think for Gixi feed, it doesn't really. Um, Count, but you can of course, of course, you can you can make a fake CV or or lie about stuff, and and that's um, it's not like you, for a gig CV, it's pretty much um, covered, right, uh, Martijn? Yeah, for uh, for now not not ready uh, because it generates a PDF, uh, and then you can always fake it. Uh, but in the next phase, uh, there will be also a QR code on the PDF property where you can also yeah so then it's it's really a validated document so people they can't uh, can't mess up with it uh, and as you uh, you write on what you mentioned it's only a export of the data that is already available on the platform uh, so that also makes it that it's uh, really validated data on uh, ratings and transaction uh, um, because people they really work via the platform and but are you sorry, sorry. No, that from, from Globo, it's uh, almost the same. So like ratings include good ratings and bad ratings. And also to avoid like potential falsification, the, the certificates are located in a global website and through a QR code that it's included in the actual certificate, um, you can check that it's validity. So oh, it's okay. almost impossible to fake it, of course the information um, that the queer can add uh, as from like his past experience or languages or whatever, of course they can invent that, but the data uh, provided by Globo, it's 
uh, and it's like that. It's it can be falsificated. And Maria, didn't you tell me that you guys are looking for some perhaps partner organizations uh, that maybe you know could hire these workers? There would be next career step for them. So I guess if you're partnering with some other industry where Glovers could go as a next career step, it's very important that you provide valid information because then you're also responsible for your, to your partner organization. Yes, yes, of course. Um, we have other initiatives um, aligned to, to this. We have what we call the job board, uh, which is a, a web page in which we display um, our partners, uh, like our restaurant partners' jobs uh, offers for couriers that want to find other jobs uh, besides being a courier. Um, in a way, they can use this certificate to show they are uh, former couriers and they have experience. Uh, and in a way, it's what you mentioned, like this gives like authenticity, authenticity sorry, and it validates their, their previous experience. Like for, for it to have like a global stamp uh, makes it more relevant. Mm -hmm. Great, and uh, there's also a question uh, well, from uh, George is making the point uh, that it seems like that, that companies are making it easier for them to access personal data and not involving workers. And, and George, I think from what we heard today, they are indeed involving workers. So the Gig CV project of Martine really built up upon a survey of workers. And Global just mentioned also they're proactively seeking feedback uh, uh, from workers. Uh, um, if that answers your question. Um, and there is a question uh, from Rodrigo about the privacy of personal data. Um, I'm not sure what that relates to. Um, anyone has something to add? Um, any other questions uh, from audience? Uh, please feel free to raise hand. We can take a couple more questions before we need to conclude. So. Uh, please feel free uh, to ask a question. If you don't know how to raise a hand, you can also just unmute yourself and start speaking. Uh, Valeria, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, hello to everybody. And thank you very much for organizing a such very interesting, uh, really, uh, uh, sessions uh, overall. Um, I have really a question um, I'm trying to, to, to understand here. Um, it's more than a question, it's a concern from my side, but I want to really listen what the, particularly the platform, the representative also, what the platform they, they tell on their side. Now, um, in the light of the experience that you um, have uh, with these, uh, you know, sharing of data and, and, and portability and so forth, and possibilities that are given to workers to find other jobs inside, outside the platform, across different platforms, platforms whatsoever, improving your own life and work experience, let's put it this way. Do you see that, um, you know, there are, uh, remember one of you was mentioning the fact that there is a quite monitoring from your side to see that these workers then at the end of the day, they also, you know, are employed by companies. So there is a kind of transfer of uh, employment uh, into companies. Um, now, I don't know whether this is a general view that comes also from the side of the other panelists. Um, and whether you know you could give a bit of more information regarding that. In other words, do you see here in a, the fact that workers really are then getting opportunities to find other jobs in companies, employed in companies, or do they remain, you know, kind of gigging and getting gigs, uh, whatever across platforms? What is the most realistic scenario that you see in front of them? Thank you very much. Can I, so if I jump in here, um, so we, my platform employs everybody that works. So we are an employer uh, and we pay the salaries, taxes, pensions, and sick days and all that, that we have to do according to the law, just like a normal temp agency. Um, it's quite common that temp agencies offer try and hire schemes uh, for companies uh, ahead of them so taking over the recruitment process, vetting process, onboarding process, and those aspects uh, in order for them to help if they don't have a big HR department. So we do the same, but it's more done in a digital way. 
and that way uh, it's quite easy for companies to for example to enroll with a person for three months time and then it can hire the person and it's actually free then and that way we've picked up one person from unemployment to full-time employment and uh, yes if that's what the person wants of course uh, there are also many people that don't want to be employed and they prefer to have the complete flexibility um, of being a temp worker or a gig worker. I don't know exactly the difference between these two. Um, so, and they choose simply to uh, plan their week based on their life and what they would like to do. And they don't want to be hired and they want to have that. They, uh, for them, the flexibility is more important than the income security because they believe then they can find different types of work on one or several different platforms. Thanks, Michael. Would anyone like to respond to Valeria? Anyone else, uh, Victor de Maria? Yeah, from, from Global, the thing is um, our queers are mostly freelancers. So they are not our employees. Um, so in a way, what we do is we give them access to these tools, but we are unable to track whether or not they are employed by a third party um, because we can't do that. I mean, we can only offer them this, um, this platform um, but we, it, it's super hard for us to know if they are, um, they move to other jobs or not. Yeah, I see. Have you heard anything from your side or you're good? Okay, not for now, I'm good. Uh, thanks for these answers and to Valeria for an excellent question. Uh, we have another Thank question you. from uh, Ayo Ade, if I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, please feel free to introduce yourself. Yeah. My name is Ayo Ade Ibrahim from Nigeria. Uh, I have two questions to ask because I know much about uh, the Uber and the uh, delivery. And when you are talking about data, for example, if, if you are working with Uber, you can still work with other platforms simultaneously. Like now, if I open my app for Uber, at the same time, I can open my app for another app companies. And whatever the, the customer that call me to my app, I will accept. On that kind of cases, how do you manage the data and how do you collect the data together? That's number one question. Number two questions is, how did Uber driver use his data to another gig platform? How did it correspond? And how do they accept them as an experienced uh, workers coming from uh, Uber platform to another platform? So these are my two questions that I need more clarification on. Are you Thank yourself you. an Uber driver? Come again. Are you yourself an Uber driver? Do you drive for Uber? Yes, yes, I drove for Uber. I drove for great. Uber in Nigeria. Oh, yes, great. And, 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 and I'm a unionist, I'm an organizer there too. So I know much about all these data that they are talking about. If you want to go, go deep data, about, if you want to go deeper, about the data collections is beyond what they are explaining here. It's beyond what they are explaining here because data is the key and there's the most sensitive part of our industry. So uh, all these things they are explaining here, I see that a very fair of what really go on concerned to data collections. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, I'm really glad that we also have some of the workers actually join and uh, we see that how how sensitive uh, this topic it is to them because it really determines uh, uh, their lives and livelihoods and earnings. So would anyone like to respond to this? So I think that Ayad is, uh, uh, is worried about the lock-in effects. So how does he switch from Uber to Lyft or another comparable platform and how is actually the data collected? Vihard? Yeah, well, I think we're, we're not a, uh, a right heading platform, but um, I do agree on that, that the, the sensitivity of the data. And, and of course, we're, um, uh, I think a lot of Dutch platforms, have, at least they are open to, to share the data of their workers, um, as we're doing, of course, in the uh, Gig CP uh, initiative. Um, and um, I, what was the question real quick? I think he was the most concerned about the lock-in effects, uh, indeed, how uh, can workers switch from Uber to another platform? So your answer is, well, GigCV could, could be one option. Yeah. 
and then it and then it would and I think that's an interesting question and then I think it would be required to import the data as well and um, and we had this I had discussions with Martijn about it I think when it comes to um, automatic import of, of those this information you there there's a really a need of trust between the platform companies and I don't think that trust is that the trust might be there on a personal level but it's not going to be there yet um, in terms of if someone for example have a as a declaration of good behavior, I'm not going to just accept it from another company because we are, of course, responsible um, to uh, to check on that as well. So I think there's there are some challenges ahead. Yeah, indeed. And if you know um, Uber would make explicit deals with Lyft, let's say our competitor, they accept their data, then you know Uber is basically agreeing for its drivers to be taken over by a competitor. Um, that's why I think some external party like like CV, what Martin is doing, can be very valuable uh, and sure for that. Uh, but I think we are right on time. So Maria, Michael, Vichar, thank you so much for joining us today for this lively discussion. Uh, I learned myself a lot, and I hope others in the audience have as well. Uh, please feel free to continue this discussion in the chat. And uh, now I pass the floor to uh, Martijn uh, to tell us about the future uh, plans with the uh, Geek CV and conclude this session. So please stick with us for a few more minutes.